bombshell allegations against the West Virginia State Police. We have violated, violated on our state police level, women's rights. A laundry list of shocking allegations, taping women in a locker room, destruction of evidence, and theft from a local casino. Basically, any way you cut it, that money was stolen. It's shaking up the very top of state police, and we have promises of accountability from the governor's office. There are no individuals on, on any kind of protected list or an untouchable list. The superintendent is out. There is no pathway that absolutely you can remain as a colonel. Before anything can be said, I resigned five minutes ago. A new man is in charge. We are filling this interim position with absolutely a superstar. Now tasked with cleaning things up. He's to review all these matters and then bring them back uh, to us for, for consideration on how uh, discipline would be met out. The Eyewitness News investigative team is tackling it all with complete team coverage. Our full team coverage starts right now. Our crews are digging deeper into this bombshell case to make sure you have everything you need to know. We start with lead investigative reporter Kenny Bass live at Western Virginia State Police Headquarters in South Charleston. Kenny. Well, Gina, Governor Jim Justice is calling this a tough day for West Virginia, but one which also represents an opportunity to address problems within the state police and then move forward with new leadership and a sharper focus on protecting and serving Mountain State residents. When presented with the findings of the investigation by the West Virginia Department of Homeland Security, Governor Jim Justice said he knew what he had to do. Justice, who was first alerted to an anonymous letter detailing several potential problems within the state police late last summer by Eyewitness News, determined the best way to right the ship was to make a change at the very top. I had Jan come over to the house earlier this morning we sat in my driveway and talked you know the first thing I told Jan was Jan there is no pathway here there is no pathway that absolutely you can remain as the colonel of the state police in the state of West Virginia Jan turned to me and said before anything could be said I resigned five minutes ago Justice cited several incidents which led to Cahill's downfall, with the most egregious the placing of a video camera inside the State Police Academy women's locker room by its then Deputy Director of Training, Joseph Portero, who died from a medical emergency while training in 2016. Justice says compounding the problem is that following Portero's death, three troopers reviewed video files from the camera. They then destroyed the memory device. No investigation was ever conducted. We have violated, violated on our state police level, women's rights. Wouldn't you absolutely think that a women's locker room ought to be a safe place? Justice also said the theft of money from Mardi Gras Casino and Resort in Nitro by a high-ranking trooper was mishandled. Basically, any way you cut it, that money was stolen. And then, as far as us doing a quick investigation and getting right on to what we should get on to, we didn't do that. Justice says the troubled times at the top of the state police should not reflect on the men and women who serve and protect West Virginia. In many ways today, you've got, you've got way, way, way too much doubt that will absolutely adversely affect the performance of our troopers in many ways today. And that's got to change. The reason given for the late first Sergeant Portero for putting the camera in the women's locker room was that he was investigating possible infidelity by members of his staff. And other members of the academy staff knew of the camera but never said anything. So Colonel Jan Cahill is out, and Justice has appointed former state trooper and deputy director of Capitol Police Jack Chambers as the interim superintendent. We'll have more on him in just a moment. But first, the governor says... Colonel Cahill still thinks that he made the right decisions in dealing with those situations that the governor outlined. But the governor said he disagreed with Cahill's judgment, and if he had not resigned, he would have been fired. Reporting live at the state police headquarters in South Charleston, Kenny Bass, Eyewitness News. Thank you, Kenny. And uh, now 
With Cahill's resignation, Governor Justice appointed a new interim superintendent today with an extensive background. Eyewitness News reporter Anna Saunders also joining us from State Police Headquarters with more on the State Police's new leader. Anna. Yeah, Dave, Colonel Jack Chambers is now the interim superintendent of the West Virginia State Police. His first order of business will be conducting internal investigations into the agency that he just became the leader of. Now, Chambers' law enforcement background goes back decades. He comes to the state police after serving as the deputy director for the Capitol Police in Charleston, but he brings with him 26 years of law enforcement experience that also includes the state police where he climbed the ranks to lieutenant colonel. Governor Justice calling him a superstar today with miles of credibility and credentials. He has ordered Chambers to start conducting his own internal investigations into some of the allegations toward the state police. He specifically named the destroying of evidence that Kenny named the alleged theft at the Mardi Gras Casino and, of course, the case where a man died after a reported struggle with state police in Berkeley County. And I think anybody and everybody that knows Jack Chambers is going to say just this. He's a man of honor. He'll do the right things. And we entrust upon him to absolutely do any level of rightness, cleanup, whatever it may be, we will entrust upon him to do just that. Now, the governor's chief of staff, Brian Abraham, said that Chambers will be given free reign on these investigations, and then he will then have to report back to the governor's office what to do about the troopers named in these allegations. Live in South Charleston, Anna Saunders, Eyewitness News. Anna, thank you. And we want to be sure you can follow every detail of this case from beginning to end. Right now on the homepage of WCHSTV.com, we have everything you need to know. Just click on our main story on the homepage and you'll have not only everything we've done today, but also links to multiple reports we've done on the story for the past several weeks.